Hey, this is Matt from Investiquant. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020. And once again, we had another strong day in the markets. Uh, markets pushed higher, closing at highs, closing at the high of the session as well as buyers stepped in aggressively uh, right there in the final 30 minutes or so of trading pushing the markets to the highs where they closed. So what I want to do today is take a look at that bullish price action where you're closing really strong and we're seeing more buying in the overnight session. This is uh, following through as we get higher prices happening uh, in the overnight session. So let's take a look at that and we'll use a new pivot zone as the opening area that uh, we'll look at this morning. So I'm going to run this in all four instruments. The setup is going to be getting long at the open, which is 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at the close of regular trading hours, which is 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And for the opening filters, today I'm going to use gapping up between resistance 1 and resistance 2 from our pivot zone area. So I can hit equals here, and we're kind of on the border of that right now. So uh, the R2 pivot in the S&P this morning is 35.5108, so it would need to open underneath that. We're just a few points below that right now. Uh, the R1 pivot is at 35.3892, so uh, we're well above that, but we're on the border of R2 and R3 currently, just a little bit below that. But I'm going to use the zone that we are currently in, which is between resistance 1 and resistance 2 using the uh, standard floor pivots. And then I'm going to go into the price patterns, and I'm going to describe just yesterday's price action as closing at the highs of the session. So in this location of last open and close, I can say we closed in the top 10% of the daily range. And then I can go into indicators and say we are in a bull market. So I can describe that as simply being above a 10 and 200 day moving average. Then I can hit view results. And here we go. So these are the results of going long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at the close 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time, when the prior day closed up at the highs of the session and above a 10 and 200 day moving average. The following morning is gapping up between pivot points R1 and R2. So historically, this has happened 59 times in the S&P, 48 in the NASDAQ, 56 in the Dow, and 35 in the Russell. And when we look at the win rates on these, you can see the S&P is quite weak here. 34% of these have ended up closing above the open that following session. Uh, the NASDAQ, 42%, so that one's weak as well. Uh, YM, just 50-50, so no bias there in the win rates. And then the Russell, stronger than the others for some reason, at 60%. And if you look at the average win to average loss, you'll notice the S&P quite a bit larger on the average loss than the average win. Uh, that is true for the NASDAQ as well. So both of those have weak win rates and the average loss is larger than the average win. Uh, that's not the case for the Dow. Dow average win is a little bit bigger than the average loss, uh, but the Russell, which has the best win rate, also has a larger loss than average win. Uh, so those are all a little bit skewed to uh, bigger moves to the downside. In fact, if you check out this new button that we've got here, view results distribution, this will show you the distribution of results of wins and losses. So let me click on this. I've got the S&P selected, so this is going to show the results of the S&P. If I click on that, you can see this is a histogram of all of the wins and losses, all of the trades uh, within this setup. So we've got the amount of the win or loss down on the bottom axis and the trade count for each of those on the vertical axis. As you can see, this is the zero line right here in the middle of the chart. So on the left of the zero line, these are all losses. And the taller the bar, the more often they have happened. Uh, on the right of the zero line are the wins and the taller the bar, the more often it has happened. So if you just look at, you know, to the left of the zero line, you can see there's quite a few uh, more taller lines. So they're happening more frequently uh, than the ones that are on the right, the wins. So over here, the wins of, you know, two points. We've got four samples here. If we go to the next taller one, uh, this would be six points in the ES, only four samples there. And you can see they start dropping off after that. We've got one outlier over here on the far right, Whereas on the left of the zero line, you see taller bars and they are more far. There's more on the farther left hand side. So the outliers, uh, we've got quite a few more outliers to the downside. We've got four of these that have been more than 20 points 
lower. So these are 20 points or more lower on the very left. This is plus 20 points or more higher. And definitely more outsized risk taking place on the left side of this chart, which shows riskier sessions. So hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, we are, again, right on the border of that R1 and R2. And if we don't end up opening there, we will see uh, different results in this test. So if we get closer to the open and we're not trading in R1 or R2, you'll probably want to go into opening filters and adjust the setup. We may be in that R2 to R3, which does have different results. So hopefully you found that interesting. Good luck, and we will see you next time.